I get in a car accident every time the snow arms in here. Yeah. But <coughs> somebody's food is here. I'm gonna text you tell you to go out and open there you go, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I hope he tipped. Sorry, Dan, you do not get any. No, the other Dan, because he was staring. He was eyeballing that barbecue. All right, it's time. We're streaming. We're good. Smithville Board of Aldermen work session is now called to order. First item on the agenda is the uh, discussion of enforcement of Chapter 235, Dog and Cat Regulations. Ms. Wagner. Mayor and Alderman, um, want to kind of walk through information that was included in the packet. And I do apologize. There was some information that um, there were multiple versions of the memo I was working on remotely and then um, LinkedIn and the wrong one got posted. So there's a second alternative that didn't get included in the information posted. And I'll walk through that here in a minute as well. But to briefly outline um, kind of the information in the memo, ordinance um, chapter 235 outlines the city's requirements for um, operating a city pound, either internally through staff or contracting that out. Outlines regulations for the licensure of dogs and cats, limitations relating, the, relating to the number of animals kept, abandonment, running at large, um, and all of those items we would in, anticipate as part of um, enforcement of animal control issues and concerns. The police department provides our primary response. So when we get a call of a vicious dog or a dog at large, it is the police department that, that uh, responds to the call. Those animals, if they are at large, are collected and housed at the facility known as Megan's Paws and Claws that's located on the water treatment plant facility property. Once the dog is taken to the pound, it is housed in an intake facility for observation. It's held for 10 days or until it's claimed by the owner if we're able to make contact with the owner. During the time that it's there, we do monitor for any obvious health concerns or um, uh, issues and obvious medical attention is provided. Once that 10 day period has expired, the dog, if not reunited with its owner, has, is moved to the main pound building and is available for adoption. All dogs are brought up to date on vaccinations and are spayed or neutered before adoption. Um, in addition, they are microchipped. In the case of a vicious dog or dog bites, um, by ordinance, a dog that bites a human is required to be quarantined for at least a 10 day observation period, either at a vet of the owner's choosing or at the city pound. Once that 10 day period has expired, the dog can be returned to the owner, assuming there are no signs of illness. The process of issuing citations is handled through the court system like any other ordinance violation. I will note that response in, in vicious dog situations is really pretty low. As Chief and I talked through this situation um, and animal control in general, one to two occurrence per year at the most, and really in recent memory, we don't remember. Yeah, yeah, two a year would be a busy year as, as Chief just said. <clears throat> we currently work with a nonprofit, Friends of Megan's Paws and Claws, to provide support to the facility uh, and support of the impounded animals. The original facility, the one that the animals are held in initially, is um, the facility that was built in 2010 with monetary and in-kind donations from the community in response to, to Megan's Paws and Claws. Funding and donations were spearheaded by Tom and Lori Kissinger, um, Megan's parents. A similar facility was constructed with city funds in um, 2017 or 2018. This facility provides the ability to separate dogs um, to ensure that none are ill and it provides space to quarantine any aggressive dogs. <clears throat> An administrative coordinator in the utilities department um, division of the public works department works with the police in providing the day-to-day -day care of those animals. This position has also worked with Friends of Megan's Paws and Claws to coordinate adoption of unclaimed animals. Approximately 25 to 30 animals are adopted annually. There's information in the packet that does include statistics from the shelter as well as, excuse me, from the pound, as well as um, police information 
on, on responses. The, on average, six to seven dogs are adopted, excuse me, impounded on a monthly basis. Most are returned to the owner or adopted in less than 30 days. The second piece of information that's included in the packet outlines kind of the timing of when calls for service related to animals are. Police responses for calls really reach a peak between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. with the most responses around four o'clock. And on the days of the week, really Friday is the highest need. It's kind of a heat map included in there. As we've noted in the past, the water master plan, which was completed in 2018, outlines a need for expansion of the water treatment plant to provide water services for the community as we continue to grow. Because the existing buildings are in the footprint of that expansion, that expansion will affect the pound building, buildings. Over the course of the last several months um, and, and following discussion at the retreat, staff, the mayor, um, and representatives of both Friends of Megan's Paws and Claws have met. We've also met with a local veterinarian as a response to a meeting invite um, we sent out to uh, all local veterinarians and those who provide boarding services for animals to try to identify an alternative for looking at care that might be a contracted service. Um, and uh, former alderman Kelly Kabilski helped spearhead some of the review in those, those discussions and efforts. We wanted to try to determine the best way to enforce chapter 235 in line with other uh, pri priorities throughout the community. So based on the ongoing needs and priorities, it's staff's recommendation at this point in time that we uh, issue a request for proposals based on, on board uh, input here for animal care and housing services to meet the needs of Chapter 235. It would be anticipated that an agreement would provide for the observation and care of animals collected. The police would take um, the animals as they're collected to the, the facility and they would be monitored. A medical assessment would occur. There would also be behavioral observation to determine suitability for adoption. And then coordination of return to owners would be taken care of through that contractual relationship. An RFQ and evaluation process would anticipate cooperation by whoever would receive that. Um, it would basically, we anticipate a contract in coordination with Friends of Megan's Paws and Claws, particularly in the adoption process or in any way that they found appropriate. What did not get included, it was, it was in a version that didn't get pulled over to the final document. Um, an alternative approach that staff has reviewed would be to reevaluate the proposed police facility construction that we'll talk about here in a, a bit. And we've, we've had conversations about needs in the police department for inclusion of space for, an an, for animal impoundment and care. This would also include a need for revision of staffing needs in, in the organization to add an animal control position within the police department. At this time, we don't have full cost of what that would be, uh, but that, the, that information could be developed. In any case, we don't anticipate a solution to the problem in, as we conclude this calendar year, but as we work through the next fiscal year and really expansion of the water treatment plant is not uh, included in the CIP until 2027. So we do have some time to work through this, but we do need some direction or feedback from to the board as to a pre uh, preferred option for moving forward, whether that be issuing an RFQ for looking at that care uh, or including information and review of a police department facility. Both of those we would anticipate would need to occur this fall to help us um, look at the second item on the agenda are police department needs, uh, but then also to provide opportunities to evaluate what costs and services might be able to be provided. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions, but we are looking for direction from the board this evening. Hey, Cynthia, I have some questions for you. Hmm? One, one um, second, Alderman Russell, please hold. Oh, uh, pardon me. I first wanted to hear from uh, former Alderman Kabilski and, and Don, if you have anything to add before the we open this to the Alderman. Do you have anything to add, Kelly? We step up so they, those online can hear you.
There you go. Yes. Kelly Kabilski, former alderman. Um, and discussions, looking at everything, in my opinion, I would like to see an RFQ go out or RFP to go out to contract with either a local vet or a boarding facility to house all of it. I just, in my opinion, I just don't feel there's that large of a need yet or city limit animals. I would like to see maybe eventually talking with Megan's Paws and Claws or friends of Megan's and Paws and Claws to look at fundraising, looking at more of a regional, maybe working with Pat County and Clay together to do a shelter of some sort and work with them. So I think Pat County is also in need of a shelter. Oh, I can't, I gotta talk to you them can, too. You can I'll carry okay. it with you. <laughs> so anyway, you so that's a discussion <laughs> I'd like to have with you guys, be smarter than the microphone. So um, I just think there's just a bigger need outside the city limits, but coming from the city standpoint, I feel that contracting with a vet or a boarding facility to do the in and house stuff, I think would be the more financial route to go. So thank you. Any questions? Don, do you have anything to add? I figured you did. So I want to make sure you get your time. Dogs Chasing day. dogs. Chasing dogs day. Um, I'm Don. I don't think we've met you, Leah. Nice to meet you. I don't think we ever got to really meet you. Oh, you have that hat. No. Um, we tried as, to steal your tacos Thursday, but I know, right? They were really delicious. By the way. Um, as a stakeholder, I would like to ask to be involved in conversations around planning. I think it's a big thing. Um, while it sounds like can a you great make sure idea, you talk to the mic so they can hear you? Yep. I have an Italian voice that typically carries. Sorry. Um, I see good and bad in outsourcing. Outsourcing seems to be the simple fix. I don't think it's a long-term fix. That's just my opinion. Um, I see opportunities for partnering and I'd really like us to partner with you guys. We've already raised over what you use as an annual budget for your current town. And I feel strongly that this community is very, um, what's the right word, committed to making things successful for the animals in Smithville. I don't think we could stop there. Obviously, we've got a lot of ability to, to move the threshold for the, forward. Um, we weren't. We really wanted to be involved in more of the planning process, and we weren't able to really get into the details of anything because the, the meetings never happened. So I'm a little concerned about that. Um, I think we've seen Platte County, for example. We do have a county problem. We legit do, but that's not a Smithville problem. So we need to keep them separate. So while I agree, we need to advocate for Platte County and Clay County, and I plan to do so. Um, I want to continue to advocate for Smithville. My concern is if we outsource, what happens when the contract ends? What happens then? We had that happen in Platte County. The Platte, Dr. Jackson was the outsource. And years later, he realized he was losing money, right? So I, while I agree there's good, there's also bad. And it also is going to be a difficult story to tell the residents of Smithville that funded the original facility that now it's just going to go away. Like, I don't know how that's going to work. That's not going to feel good. Um, I love your idea of moving to the police department in that space. I think that if we talked and worked together and partnered, I think we could probably raise funds to stand up a net new there versus outsourcing it. That's where I'd like to see us go. It's not going to happen overnight, but it could happen. And like I said, in six months, we raised more than, than the annual budget. I feel strong about it. Um, I worry again that if we outsource to it, and this is my personal opinion, if we outsource to a vet, that the current situation with both of our vets in Smithville, they don't have any fencing, they don't have the ability to do enrichment, they don't have 24 seven staff, they don't have anyone to do marketing. I mean, there's just a big gap there. I don't know that we'd be going forward. Um, that's my two cents. That's high level, sorry. I can go into detail, but I don't think you guys want to. I would just like to ask that you hold off on the RFP. And that instead, can we maybe form a subcommittee and work as a subcommittee and come up with other solutions and see if we can't help you guys financially get that solution? Yeah, and I'll see what the alderman have to say, but one of the, usually with our committees, they require residency. And as you know, you're not a Smithville resident. So that, that makes it difficult when we come up with committees. Um, but partnering with a nonprofit is definitely an option, but um, talking to the sheriff in Clay County, they de there is a regional issue. The, the um, so 
we'll open it up to the alderman. Do um, you have anything else? It's fine. Kelly, do you have something else? Yeah, come on up. I definitely want to, I think whichever direction we go, if we did the contract, whatever, absolutely is going to take you guys with them to make this happen, period. So I just want you to think that was, I was not pushing you guys out. We have to do this together, whichever route we go. Yeah. I just want you to make sure that, no, is this is going to be, in the long term, I think fundraising to do the regional, this is going to have to be, it's going to outgrow anything. Like you said, the vet could discontinue service. I get that, but I just want you to know that we definitely have to work together. Yeah. And, oh, and I think we have to have those conversations. Yes. We haven't had it. The adoption was nowhere in my radar. That's not something we discussed. But I think that there's, those are the types of things that happen behind the scenes. And I'm trying to speak for what I've seen. Um, simply meaning that I can't hear quite a bit. My heart is with the animals. And hey, could you talk on the mic, please? Sorry. My heart is with the animals. Um, my heart is, is with those that care of the animals. You guys, the staff there, hands down can't say enough good stuff about it but the reality is there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes and I don't think you see that unless you're there um there's a lot of love there there's a lot of you know like I said I run into Melissa at one o'clock in the morning at Blue Pearl with one of ours that was injured up there you know she doesn't have to do that stuff um and it's not just Melissa I see them all go above and beyond and God bless them that they do that I just want to see that we're not going from having a nice facility we do have a nice facility we really do it could be better and I'd love to make it better. I'd love to earn the funds to make it better. But at the same time, if we go to one of our vets in the current state that we have, they're gonna be stuffed in a kennel and they're not gonna get what they need as far as enrichment and yards. We have no fencing on 169, which is just terrifying to me. I don't see them having the staff to go walk them three times a day or give them the freedom. Currently they have the freedom to go into the outdoor enrichment area for like two hours, right? How's that gonna work? I think we're going backwards. That's just my opinion. I think all those things are going to be addressed in an RFQ also. And, and Mayor, that was one thing that I wanted to outline also is, um, and we have had conversations about what would be included in, in care and those desires. Those are things we've included in that discussion. There actually was a meeting with, that we did invite because the city provided service at this point in time. And so we did invite all the veteran, veterinarians in the community, as well as those both in the community and within a reasonable distance who board animals to kind of walk through those expectations of what would make sense from the care and the care that we're providing at this point in time and get some feedback that helps staff understand that it would be something that we felt that we could put an RFQ together to come up with looking at outsourcing those services as a means of providing some assistance for us. It would be nice to be able to have a regional solution so that um, it, there were services provided by a larger entity that we could all work with because it is something that is, you know, as, as we've said, we also are balancing priorities of, of funding for all of the needs throughout the community. Well, and as you mentioned, this is the problem we have to solve by 2027. We're not going to solve it today. Tonight. We're Correct. not going to solve it tonight. Correct. We're not going to solve, even if we add it as the police department, that's not going on the ballot till April. Right. As we know, if that passes, then we've got months and months of financial things to deal with, to right? Bonds with. and sales tax and everything else. So right. um, nothing's going to be finalized tonight. We appreciate the input. And I, if there's anybody else from the public. That, Mayor, uh, can I make one yeah. other point just in um, in response to talking about an RF, RFQ process? Because I really think this ought to be a request for qualifications. A request for proposals is something we send out and we take a low bid. A request for qualifications is we outline what it is we're looking for and we have submittals that are reviewed. It's like selecting an engineering firm or some type of professional service, which was what we, we believe this would be. A, a number of the members of the board have participated in processes before where we have done an RFQ where we put an interview panel together. Mm -hmm. And it would be our intent that we would try to find individuals from the community representing the needs and the desires of our our animal control it's, services. It's typically what, an alderman staff and community member and a community so. member. So that's what that's what we would would anticipate there would be continued process in that. And I'm sorry I didn't address that more in, in my presentation earlier either. Thank you for clarifying that. That makes me feel a lot better. And thank you, um, Mayor Damian as well for clarifying that nothing's really going to happen tonight. Yeah, just thanks. wanted to make sure that we had a voice and I wanted to also just really stop and think about the impact it would have of just getting rid of the current power. Well, and, and one of the one of the issues that you've brought up many, many times is our staff works, especially the water department works till three or four and y'all don't get off work till after five and lining up schedules is very difficult if you can, if you have to take PTO to come to a meeting. 
right? So, and, and I'm not going to force staff to stay till this meeting to, to talk through that. So if they're, especially if they're the water department staff that's understaffed already that we've got to fix, right, Chuck? So that position's posted, right? Nighttime supervisor. There we go. So we're, we're getting there. It just takes time. Um, thank you. Thank just you. consider how if we would really like to have a voice at the table. And you will possible, always have a voice. Just like you have and if it's possible meeting. to have some sort of subcommittee while I do not live in city limits, I think Tracy and I are. There and we go. She's also on our board of directors. So it would be yeah. real important to us to, to help. We really want to partner. Yep. All right. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We have not budgeted an ACO position. Yeah, there's not currently that, as I had indicated in my presentation, anything tonight is to help us understand how we work forward and, and, and come up with a plan. Um, it would depend on resources and, and how we'd be able to fund that, what that cost would be. So, yeah. And I think one other thing to keep in mind as well, you know, we've talked a lot about volunteering as well, and Don and I have had ongoing conversations. Currently, the, the pound is on property that's used for the water treatment facility. Access to that by the public is, it's problematic. It's our water treatment, it's our water supply system. There's, there are some, some concerns, not that we don't have, we don't trust people that come out there, but, but there are concerns about that. In many instances, the same concerns would apply in a police department facility. We would have to work very carefully through any process and working, we want to coordinate and make all the opportunities possible for assistance through Friends of Megan's Paws and Claws, but it would be um, ensuring that all parties understood kind of what those limitations and, and, and what those opportunities are. Mm -hmm. No, so if you look at what Clay County is working on right now, they're working on getting regional dispatch and getting regional services. So right now, even our dispatch is through Platte County. Uh, Sheriff Aiken is very involved in trying to get things built for the entire community. We are in both Clay and Platte County, but the majority is in Clay County. And he's got a lake that he now has to deal with as well, now that he's got that as well under him. So. Um, he understands the problem and he's looking at what different communities do because they also provide police services for some municipalities. So they are the ones taking those calls because not every, not every city has a police department in Clay County. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and if we did an RFQ, you guys would be part of that. But at this point, we're not even to the point of saying, the board hasn't even said to do an RFQ yet. The board could say, keep it the way it is right now and don't worry about it. So we've got to open to the board. Uh, Ms. Bunch, you're next. First of all, thank you for letting me speak. Um, 19 years ago, I stood right here before everybody that was the alderman at the time, and I proposed a dog park. And everybody thought I was crazy, right? Who's going to fund it? How's it going to happen? What does it look like? And I sat here and said exactly how they do it in Los Angeles, and it's with dog tags. And while I'm not <laughs> happy when fees are increased or this and that, but you pay them, right, as a responsible pet owner. And right now, we have a tag fee of $10. If our tag fee was $45 and everybody in the city limits of Smithville paid that fee, there would be our animal control officer salary. We are having a very, and I second Don Adams, I absolutely love that woman and I love Melissa. So kudos to them, hats down. They, they do things beyond any of us can even comprehend. So everything she says, I second it. Um, we are having an epidemic of dogs being dropped in Smithville because it is now known to outlying Platte County and other areas that we do not have an animal control officer. So now dogs are getting dumped. I recently rescued a dog that got dumped with bloody paws. It's a very sad thing to see um, when I feel like the city could do something and step in um, and do something about getting an animal control officer. It's actually very serious. We see it in the field. I'll give you an example of recently, uh, one of my groomers on a Friday evening got off work and she went home and walked her dog in Harbor Lake. A dog came out of the woods off leash and bit her on the arm. And I panicked and called 911. 
And that's the process sometimes, even getting to the right officer, Platte County, Clay County, that sort of thing. And I said on the call, uh, Harbor Town. Now I messed up, right? Because that's not in city limits as I figured out. But Harbor Lake is where she lived. And I was sad and scared. It's my groomer. It's our hand. Oh my God, she's bleeding. I was seeing the pictures. It's, it's terrifying. The dog came out of the woods. That's what's happening. So that's real. And I can show you pictures. It's scary. It's sad. And until it happens to you or a neighbor or somebody that gets bit by walking their dog in Harbor Lake or somewhere in the city limits, it's real. And so I don't know how to address it. Uh, I can voice to you what's happening. I can voice to you that I know that by the magazine AARP that I just now qualified for, it says 70% of all households have dogs. People have adopted dogs through the pandemic for companionship, for working at home. And so that is an epidemic in itself, like, you know, which is great, right? It helps the pounds get released from some of the dogs. But what it also does is it also puts a lot of heavy burden on the vets and the local pounds because they either move or they get divorced or that didn't work out so well. Now we're back to work and I can't take care of the dog. There's a lot of reasons why people are doing these things, but it's happening. We see it. I see it. Uh, we do a pet grooming business. And a lot of times the dogs will come in, they'll be fully matted, haven't been groomed, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I have over 2000 customers registered in my system right now. Not all of them are Smithville, of course, but they're Northland. And um, I care for the dogs just as much as Don does. And I don't know how to help. You know, when I stood here 19 years ago, and everybody thought that a dog park wasn't possible. Somehow when I was in California, you guys all got together and approved an awesome dog park. It's beautiful, right? It's absolutely beautiful. Like hands down to all the people behind the dog park. I love it. But who's man in the dog park? In LA, and I'm sorry to always refer to LA, but I've seen this work well. The police would go to the dog parks and check the dogs for their dog tags. It's a citation if they don't have their rabies shots and their, their, their dog tag on that would be generation of money for the city. As responsible pet owners, I think we would do it. I don't have any more things to say, but I would love to be included. I obviously have a for-profit business, Zuma's Mobile Pet Grooming and Indoor Pet Grooming, but I also have a nonprofit and I help women, kids, and pets fleeing domestic violence. That includes pets. I have had a personal incidence when I was helping a recipient in the field that she was living in her car with three kids in the school district of Smithville. It's a real story. A recipient that I helped and she had a dog with the three kids in the car. I called the police. I had nowhere to take this dog. I, I didn't know what to do. I, I, I'm, I, you know, the outliers, the cities, like, you know, the, there's people like Happy Dog Ranch, love them. They will help Smithville. They will help my nonprofit when I have those situations. But for me, as a survivor of domestic violence, I get triggered and I don't know how good I am sometimes helping those recipients. So I'm not a police officer. I've been to KCPD Shoal Creek training. I will go to anything that Smithville will send me to, Officer Lockridge. I promise you, I want to learn. I'll do it for free. I'll volunteer whatever you need me to do. Um, I just want to know the laws inside and out. I'm not a police officer but I know that the voiceless like the dogs and like survivors of domestic violence, sometimes they don't leave their homes because of their animals and they don't have a place to go. And I will just say it right now that one day, I hope that the dog I just recently rescued, Kai, has not only a facility in Smithville for not only dog enrichment and training, but a shelter to house it in my nonprofit. But until then, I'd like to be included somehow and I'll do whatever I can with Don and anybody else with Megan's Paws and Claws because there's a need and it hurts my heart. And I hope you understand outsourcing. It might not be the best thing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before I open up to the board, I need to address two things in, in Ms. Bunch's comments. The dog park is in the county. Our police do not police it. It's built in the county. It's 100% county facility when it comes to jurisdiction. Second of all, raising fees uh, is not allowed by under Hancock. We can raise it based on the rate of inflation, which is right now about six, 7%. So raising it four times is not allowed by law. So we cannot fund an animal control officer that way. But I will open it to the board to talk about ways that we can actually do something. So Alderman Russell, you had a comment before we open it up to the public? Yes, sir, Mayor Bully, thank you very much. And I apologize if I stepped on uh, uh, some other's toes there to uh, jump in here. But uh, if, if we're looking forward at least till uh, 2027, um, I would suggest that we uh, include uh, the dog catching uh, in that 
in the RFQ, as well as cats, um, what are the facilities going to be? Because uh, we do have a lot of cats that uh, are roaming around and they get dropped off as well. I think that uh, that we don't see it as much because I think people know that uh, we don't have a place for them, so they don't necessarily call um, the authorities. So I think that moving forward, we probably should, uh, if we're going to go for this, we probably should be inclusive and uh, also hire a dog catching facility, whether we go, whether we go with a outsource or whether we go with uh, Megan's Paws and Claws. Thank you. Alderman Hartman, do you have anything before we open up to the room? I know it's hard to get yeah. in on Zoom. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I was just looking at the numbers. Um, I, I'm, I guess I'm pleased with the numbers. The impound totals were 54 <clears throat> so far for this year. 61% were returned to the owners. 31% uh, were adopted. I'm curious <clears throat> of that 54 that they have, how many were chipped? Um, we may or may not know that. And then just second, uh, to the comment earlier from the public, are those numbers when there's dogs that are dropped off, would they not be included in these numbers? Um, I, I would assume if they're in city limits, <clears throat> we would we would capture them and include those in numbers. So those are my two questions, Mayor. Chief, do you have any? I know I know uh, Dan Gerhard pulled most of those, right? What's that? Dan pulled that nice heat map together for us, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't believe we have numbers on uh, microchip dogs. I don't think that's something that's on the uh, Department of Agriculture intake form, but it is something we can look at at tweaking and tracking going forward. Um, what was the second, your second? Yeah, Chief, the second, the second question was, uh, we, we heard from public testimony that there's an increase of dogs being dropped <clears throat> Oh, uh, in, in the city of Smithville, and I just wondered if those numbers were included in that 54 or if we're I, not tracking those. I, I would say so. Uh, if you look back at the history on those numbers, you'll see they're trending up. They're actually trending back towards where numbers were kind of pre-COVID times, and we're, we're on projections to be similar to those numbers or a little ahead of, uh, of uh, 2019. So, yeah, that's probably contributing some to the numbers we're seeing increasing there. Chief? Could I have you also clarify, though, and, and part of what I heard, um, Alderman Hartman, you asked a question if some were, were dropped off at the facility. We don't take surrenders. I, I, took, I took his term it, or his of, wording of dropping off as dumped in town. Dumped in town. That's if, what if I that's just what wanted to clarify. To. That's what we were talking yeah, about. If, if and Alderman, those, I think but, that would be. Yeah, Alderman Hartman, if that's what you're meaning, if dumped in town, then yes, I agree with you. Um, but yeah, as a general rule, we don't we don't take surrenders. We're a. We're a pound, not a shelter. So, in no, no, looking I at our appreciate that clarification, Chief. In looking at our return to owner numbers, it doesn't seem like there's a ton of them that are dumped. I mean, they are getting a lot returned no, we, home. We get a, a a very large number of returned owners. Um, one thing we do require as well, and I don't remember if we covered this in in Miss um, Wagner's memo, but any animal we adopt, we require them to be microchipped. We microchip them before they go out, and uh, before Melissa releases them, I believe that she's putting them online and we're registering them right there in the pound before they go home. So that hopefully in the future, they get out again, quick scan and we know who they belong to. Yeah. And on those numbers, if we, do we track repeat offenders? If we have not, 54 that the same, like, you, you, when you know like the that. owner of the dog, that's uh, you're we, returning we, home right away too. We certainly can't do that right now. Like we can with uh say BWI or speed yeah. or something like that. Uh, we rely on, uh, on uh, memory yeah. and uh, kind of institutional knowledge. Um, there are the um, impound fees do increase incrementally right. uh, from second, third, and subsequent offenses. Uh, and I do know there are several of those that are paying uh, second, third, and fourth um, impound fees uh, that incrementally go up, I believe, from 25 to $100. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Alderman Chevalier, I think you had your hand up first. I did. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> you seem like you're ready to talk. No, I, I was going to say, um, I, I'm with um, Alderman Russell on the cat scenario. I mean, I, I do feel like if we are going to expand anything, I think we should also look into possibly um, what we can do with cats, because that that is pretty much the, I hear a lot more people talk about well, all the cats running around than I do about dogs. I mean, I know dogs are out there. I just know that I hear cats quite a bit. Um, so that is something 
Um, another thing is, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not necessarily against outsourcing. Um, I, I want it to be at a minimum what the level of care is today. So facility wise and, and everything like that. Um, so that's, um, I, I feel like that could be part of the, part of the RFQ um, to see what those options are. Um, and then, and then again, I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure on the, on the animal control officer thing. I mean, I, I feel like um, you know, I, the calls are just, it's, if we're going to have them go to this facility, um, I'm just not sure that there's enough, um, time, you know, for them to, to the, to enough work for them essentially. Um, so I'm curious if there could be like an on-call type, um, arrangement made, if we were going to do an animal control officer type thing. I think that absolutely is something that we'd have to look at. Um, that's one of the things that, as we've said, kind of the beauty of not having to have an answer tonight is what are those kinds of things that we could look at. I'm not sure what an on-call would look like, but that's something that we can incorporate into a review. Okay. Anyone else in there? Dan? Alder, Real Alder quickly, yeah. <laughs> now that we have time and everything else we've been doing in Smithville, we've been diligently looking at a long-term solution, 10-year plans, 20-year plans, and we have time for this. Uh, you know, I do respect those who are passionate about animals, and I do respect those who are worried about money. Instead of trying to do something quick or within just a couple of years, let's investigate with a PFQ or, or RFQ to, to look at what do we really need or foresee in the future, and what's the best solution. It may be a multiple process of what can we do right now, what can we do with uh, sharing uh, jobs, will we grow to a whole need for a whole officer and is a cat situation really needed i think it is but we but we need to look at that instead of just build another little house with a little cheap solution that we will come back in another four or five years and readdress the whole thing let's follow the same procedures we're doing with all the other master plans we have and look into it with that being said that does bring up a question that piggybacks right off there. And I agree with what, what John said about what care they're getting now is a minimum. What care they get in the next six months, what changes happen there, that's a minimum. Um, we're constantly gonna have to raise that bar. Um, what is the timeline for the water plant expansion? 20, 27 is 27 when is to, when we begin the construction. Actual construction mm -hmm. and have mm -hmm. to, okay. So yeah, we'd have to have something well in place by the end of 26. Right. Okay. That's pretty much what my making sure that that's clear is. Which, which sounds like a long time from now, but since tomorrow, since, <laughs> since I've been sitting in the seat since 18 and, and with Marv and John's been sitting in the seat since 17 and that time is going by, right? And I'd say one, one more thing, you know, I, I meant to say this too, but you know, the outsource, I would see that more of a temporary solution, the long term. Like I do like the idea of having it something with the police station. I mean, if we've got that land and we can create a, a nice facility that meets everyone's needs, um, I, I, I do think that is great, would be a great option. Yeah, and I think the conversation came out for working with local vets is because they do have additional land. And when Don first approached me of, of having a, a dog run, which we just don't have room for at the current facility, we, we don't have the room to do that, that if it's just going to be torn out in five years. Um, and I know even in the past, Ms. Bunch has contacted us willing to donate a dog run. So she had mentioned her nonprofit. We have the facilities at the city now to accept donations for things like that as well. So, um, you know, Don, as you continue to raise funds and come up with your requirements, keep us in, in touch with those. And all those things would fit into an RFP if we go out for bid on it. Um, any other discussion? So looking around the room, do we want to have staff start developing an RFP for uh, outsourcing or RFQ, sorry, RFQ for outsourcing animal control? Yes, I'd like to see those options. Ms. Shipley? I'd like to see that as well. Alderman Chevalier? Yes. Atkins? Yes. Well, I'll go to the folks online. Alderman Russell? Yes, please. Alderman Hartman? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. And I forgot your name, the city next to Don, but if you can get with Linda to get your contact information. So once we develop the RFQ, we'll have your name and email address to represent uh, Megan's Paws and Claws for us, uh, the friends of Megan Paws and Claws. We'll still be working with the Kissingers as well because 
they have been very involved in and met with us on this as well. So anything else? Cynthia, are you good? I am good. Thank you. We have a couple of cells. How many can we fit in one? <laughs> All right. And I think is will that become the shelter if we build this? Oh, and Chief mean. and I have had There's ongoing conversations. Mean. Melissa, Chief and I have had ongoing conversations. And I think this is something Don and I have had some conversations on as well. If we can, that would be one area. It would be great to be able to work in partnership with Megan's, uh, with the friends group and in coming up ways for a solution on that as well. TNR. TNR. Yeah. Yeah, I've talked to some of them, but. The, the TNR program that my mom participates in in New Mexico, they provide them with punch cards and they can go to any vet and then the shelter, the uh, nonprofit covers the rest of the cost. So they pay $100 for 10 TNRs. That's all the cost of the volunteers and then everything else is covered. So coming up with a really solid plan that's actually developed, not just somebody catching cats and taking them against spade and neuter. We need approved providers and a cost that, you know, if somebody wants to buy a punch card for 10, they, they have that, they know how to do that. Yep. And most of it's eligible to 501c3s, not to us. So we'd love for you guys to help pursue that. And, and Kelly uh, will be all over that with you. Um, who are we going to present the ballot initiative? You? Awesome. Cynthia show tonight. Chief wants the building, though. I mean, Chief and Chuck, Chuck and Matt up all here. want facilities and space. I thought, so I thought Matt's getting it, a new building out. Well, it's, yeah. No ahead, Cynthia. That's fine. So just, um, it, this is again, as a springboard off of information that we just discussed in May at the governing body retreat. Excuse me, my heavens. Um, facility needs, Marv, you, you gave me a perfect entree. Um, we've done a lot of master plans in the community. We know the needs that we've got. We've been able to work through a lot of processes to move forward in improvement of our in infrastructure. Um, looking at facilities, earlier this year, we, worked with architects to come up with plans and designs to address needs for facilities in a couple of different areas in the police department and in uh, public works and parks maintenance facilities. Um, at the retreat, we reviewed the information. We've the plans were submitted to us. Uh, or the, we presented information to the board in January and February on the two different different plans. Uh, as we had discussions at the governing body retreat, there was a uh, priority expressed for a police facility. Um, wanted to go through some information that we've received since the retreat. Uh, since retreat staff has reviewed those existing facilities and we've also had a couple of opportunities present or at least one major opportunity present itself um, and wanted to go through that and kind of some recommendations that staff would make remind the board also on our funding capacity because at this point in time within current resources we don't have the resources to be able to support any type of a facility. I also want to note um, any discussion of facilities and particularly in our community and, and in all communities that don't currently have a facility. I recognize a community center is a community desire. We've, as we discussed at the retreat and as we've discussed at various times, I would like nothing more than to be able to bring forward something that would be a way to be able to fund a community center at this point in time. It is really not feasible given the resources that we've got and the authority we have from the state to leverage resources to do a, to build a community center, maintain a community center and staff a community center. Um, estimated costs for a community center, 15 to $25 million, depending upon size, what's included. Um, we'll talk in a moment. Our debt capacity, which would be the best way to be able to address that, is 21 to $23 million. That it will become $23 million after the beginning of next year. That is funded then through property tax increases. That builds a facility. Ongoing operations for a facility of that size would be significant and would potentially outsource or outpace our ability to fund through an existing sales tax or an ability that we have to, to um, include a sales tax. And as we've seen in communities throughout the area, staffing, as we know right now, staffing just in general to keep some of our, our operations going, but particularly related to lifeguards has been difficult. So there are difficulties there at this point in time and based on discussions that we had with 
um, the governing body at the retreat. That's been put aside for, for some other discussion. Right now, the priority need, particularly related to police department, because they operate in half of this building, um, we're a community that's growing and the needs that we have in that area um, have been acknowledged and provide for um, a more efficient response to community services and providing those community services. The estimate that was provided in the early part of this year was about $16 million for a police facility. When we look at that, and as we all know, every month this year, we've, we've all experienced inflation. We've had discussions at this meeting or in, in this room as the year has progressed that projects are costing more because of, of supplies. Um, based on estimates from the architects, if we were to build this next late next year, they're estimating about $16.5 million based on current inflationary uh, costs. In working after the retreat uh, and outlined in your memo are some areas where it was identified that there could be some reductions to the cost, saving about $1.5 million. The one caution that staff would, would in, invoke or, or, or make sure that the board is aware of is any reduction to a building at this point in time as the community grows and as the station grows and we need to expand, we would probably see increases that would offset, if we save $1.5 million now, it would probably cost closer to two to two and a half million dollars down the road. So just wanted to keep that in mind. So police department costs 16 to 16 and a half million dollars. Earlier this year, the estimate for public works and parks maintenance facility that provided um, some renovation to existing parks and recreation facility uh, on, at Smith's Fork Park and covered space, locker rooms for our street maintenance, public works, ma excuse, streets, public works and park maintenance, um, as well as covered facilities for the majority of our equipment were estimated at eight to $10 million. This summer, we received communication from the Corps of Engineers that they are looking to repurpose several areas included in the Lytton Visitor Center, just um, on the outskirts of the city, in an area that two years ago we submitted uh, annexation requests to the Corps of Engineers for voluntary annexation of that land. That annexation is still under review, but we don't anticipate any problems. It's just working with the Corps. Some things take some time in that probably will. The information we've received from the core is the area where there currently is um, information about Jerry Litton, as well as um, a wildlife exhibit. They would like to outsource or provide for another entity, and they reached out to us as well as Clay County Parks and Recreation for use predominantly for administrative offices. They were really thinking our Parks and Recreation particularly in coordination with the core right there on, um, on the lake made sense. Through discussions with them, it made sense that administrative function for public works could be co-located out there as well because of the communication and the coordination on a number of particularly utility and other projects at the lake. So we would be looking at one area for administrative functions of police and parks. We could move, excuse me, public works and parks. I just moved you all to the lake too, Chief. Um, we could move the administrative pieces that we had anticipated in that larger facility to the lake. There's another um, portion of the building across from the um, information display that's currently really be, being used for space and storage. Um, that could be used for public meetings, uh, conference room space for, for city functions. We could, it could potentially even be programmed over time with parks and recreation programs. So we have expressed an interest and, and, um, appreciation for the core reaching out to the city, but a significant interest in use of those facilities. We could provide, um, the coordination and communication with having the core just down the hall would be helpful to us. Having space for administrative pieces of those two departments would alleviate some of the pressure we have on, on growth in those departments. And it allowed us to rethink design at, for a facility at 
Smith's Fork, where we could really do minimal reconfiguration to the existing office area and our maintenance supervisory staff could have office space there. And then we would really basically build storage space that would include locker room space and, and other amenities for those staff, but at a significantly reduced cost. At this point in time, we've proceeded down the road and what will be included in the 2023 budget is um, we had included $200,000 in this year's budget for design of a public works and police facility. We've not expended all of that money. We um, anticipate incorporating that in the 2023 budget for work with the core on renovation of the Lytton Center for use by administrative staff. And then that reconfigured maintenance space and storage space to include a salt barn is estimated at about $3 million. So what we look at now is total cost of police and public works parks at just under $20 million. As we discussed at the retreat, that would, and as I noted earlier, that the most logical form of funding for that would be issuance of um, general obligation bonds. Our authority for issuance of general, ob general obligation or GO bonds is set by the state based on our assessed valuation. At this point in time, the cap that we could issue in debt is $21.8 million. That's based on our current assessed valuation. Tonight, there will be a public hearing on our mill levy and you will set a new mill levy for the upcoming budget that expands our debt capacity to a little over um, 23 million. I believe Stephen, 23.7 million. A bond issuance of between 21 and 23 and a half million dollars would need a financing structure to be able to repay those bonds and that a mill levy, a property tax mill levy of 0 0.6 to 0.63 or 64 could fund that. Those, the details of that would have to be worked out with bond council uh, and our, excuse me, our financial advisors. But that's ways of, of looking at addressing that. One thing that I wanted to ensure that I also indicated $19.5 million is what we would in, estimate for construction. When we issue debt, there are costs of issuance, upfront costs related to that of about a million dollars. So we would always plug that in. So within that 21.8, we've really got the capacity to be able to do these two facilities, if that's a direction the board would be interested in looking at. Um, in addition to facilities at the retreat, we spent some time talking about ongoing operation needs and staffing needs. Included in the 2023 budget are the addition of uh, several positions. We also outlined a need for new, which two new or additional police officer positions as the community grows. As well, if the police facility is built, there would be a need for some administrative support there. Um, we currently have one administrative staff member who covers the front window. And we'd need to ensure that we have staffing to cover breaks, vacations, those sort of things. But we also have a need for um, assistance in our property and evidence. And that could be a civilian position. And what Chief and I have talked about is uh, a position that could cover the front desk. The two positions that we currently, the one position we have in a new position could take care of coverage, the support to the prosecutor and um, police or the evidence storage. Addition of those three positions is estimated at about $215,000. We also looked at the operating costs of the police department um, on an annual basis, not including personnel costs and not including capital expenditures. We spend approximately $400,000 a year on operations and support of the police department, whether it's um, our contracts for the CAD system, um, supplies, uh, training. We spend about $400,000 a year. Staff also recommends that if we are looking at ballot initiatives to fund ongoing needs, that we look at police department needs from the staffing perspective of addition of those three positions and support of operate, ongoing operating costs. 
that would provide identified funds for the police department and could alleviate some of the pressure organizationally on the budget in providing services in general. We currently have state issued authority to issue up to or to take to the voters the um, question of issuing up to one additional cent of sales tax. One cent of sales tax generates between one and 1.2 and $1.3 million on an annual basis. A half cent sales tax would generate about $650,000. Those staffing and operational needs represent about $630,000. Staff would recommend that half of that sales tax capacity the, the board take that question to the voters for support of police. So at this point in time, there would be two questions, issuance of debt and uh, police sales tax or sales tax for general fund to support the police. Mayor indicated three. Debt we, service levy. We do not have to, oh, yeah. state law does not yeah. require the board to take the question of increase of property taxes to the voters. That is something that the board would act on. I would anticipate that if the board wanted to move forward in this way, one of the things we need to do is engage in an information campaign. And part of that information would be what debt levy would be required to support issuances funds, if that makes sense. I want to outline quickly the process or timeline. Um, municipal elections can occur in November and April. There is a timeline by which questions have to be certified. If a question is placed on the ballot in April, the language must be certified into the clerk's office by the end of January. If it's on the uh, ballot in November, that language has to be certified into the clerk's office by the end of August. So just wanted to get those timelines and heads. And obviously that is a lot of information. It was all in the memo. Um, and a lot of it we did discuss at the retreat as well, but this is refining that information based on direction from you all. Happy to answer any questions that you all might have. And this again, because if the board wanted to look at an election, the first opportunity for an election wouldn't be till April, language wouldn't have to be certified till January. So this provides an opportunity for that discussion, feedback from the board and additional questions that we can research or look at. So uh, before we start with the board, um, Linda, any public comment cards? No? So I'm glad you addressed the community center because that's one thing that continues to come up. Uh, the, that's for the regular session, this is for, Work session, yeah, no problem. Um, one of the things that's come up a number of times uh, that I've seen comments on is uh, the community center question. Carney's building a pool. Um, tonight on the agenda, we're rezoning some land for the school district. They spent eight hundred thousand dollars, over eight hundred thousand dollars for a few acres uh, to build a community center in this uh, community. We'd probably need about ten acres, and luckily, uh, one of the realtors in town just walked in. We have one online as well. Uh, Eric or Dan, are there any 10 acre tracks with services available along 169 that is affordable or for sale? Exactly. Um, <laughs> thank you. I believe the answer was no. Yeah, the answer was no by Eric because he looked at me like I'm crazy. Um, Carney's going to spend about $12 million just for a pool, not a community center. They're going to, they had $500,000, over $500,000 donated by a single donor to help them start and buy some land. Um, they have a lot of land that's not in a floodplain. We happen to be by a river. And we have a lake for a reason because it flooded here. Can't build a pool in the floodway. Um, Smith's Fork is a great thing that we're going to have that option for the Litton Center. So I will let the uh, two aldermen that are on Zoom speak first. So Alderman Hartman, you can go first this time. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, as as the board has discussed earlier this year, um, I believe that we do need to go to the voters uh, for an ask uh, to the police station. Uh, I had the opportunity to sit on the committee earlier this year with the chief and several other um, city staff and some citizens. And as our, as our community grows, I absolutely think it's the right thing to do to um, look at this because every year we wait, construction costs go up. Um, and in second, uh, Mayor, I, I do believe that a sales tax is something we should look at. Again, this is all approved by the voters. We as aldermen cannot 
do anything more than ask that this be put on the ballot through through an agreement with with fellow aldermen. So I just want to make sure people understand that this is this is voter driven. This isn't necessarily alderman driven, although our, our goal is to um, obviously hear this. So uh, I'm I'm for um, these these valid issues, Mayor, and uh, I, I think that we need to grow. Uh, we need to make sure that our, our police station is, is, is positioned, police station and police officer positioned for the growth that's coming in the community. Yeah, and one, one thing to go back to the planning, um, you know, the Parks Master Plan talks about community center in 10 years. We've been working on Parks Master Plan and delivering those items that come through sales tax, right, Matt? Um, we've, we have asked for donations, and I think to date we've raised about $2,500 in three years. Yeah. Matt's not as said yes for those who didn't see that. So um, that that's one number to think about when you're talking community center, other amenities. Also, about a little over four years ago, we purchased land with the intent of building a police station. So it does take years of planning on these things. So um, we have land in hand that could be used for this. So we don't have to go find land like the school district had to do for the bus barn. Um, Alderman Russell. Mayor, if I could, yeah. I would like to clarify one thing also to make sure that we are are talking kind of in the same way at the retreat because we were talking such large numbers for uh, maintenance facility. Yeah. We were talking about two separate questions and I'm sorry, I did not clarify. Staff's recommendation at this point would be a joint question because the, the street facility would be, street and parks, the maintenance facility would be a lower cost. 20% of what we originally talked about. 20% of what we had initially talked about. The other thing I would do want to remind everyone as well as we have conversation, the move for or the need for the maintenance facility is also necessitated by the water treatment plant expansion. We won't have a facility for street facilities once we expand that. So that's staff has had, we recognize that police has been a priority. Um, but we recommend one ballot question as opposed to two, and we want to make sure we get some clarification from the board on that. The other thing that I do want to clarify, we had discussion earlier about animal control and, um, you know, as we move forward in developing information, we had looked for the board. Would you like to see those estimates included in um, a police department facility and what we could do? So just wanted to make sure that, sorry, I did not clarify that earlier. That's fine. Alderman Russell. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bowie. Um, kind of going off with what uh, Cynthia said, the uh, on the plans, and I know that, that uh, we're looking at adjusting and cutting and, and try to, to, to uh, do what we can. Everybody's been working uh, really hard on this, but uh, we have a courtyard, a conference room, a flex conference room, a community room, a quiet room, a fitness plan. Um, it's a lot of rooms, and I'm not saying the plan's wrong. I'm just saying, wondering if we need to look at repurposing this uh, uh, for, um, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, possible um, dog pound facility but then also looking forward in the future and we're building this for you know for a long to 20 years from now we want this building to be there um are two holding cells sufficient uh, i with the with the growth projection and then also uh i think we should probably look at a dispatch center and i know that that's dispatched outsourced right now um with with uh, platte county but uh everybody's growing and I think that that might be something at least to look, even if we don't get uh, get it right away, something to look at in the future with this building. That's, um, a, that's a whole nother same size facility on its own. It's a, okay. Yeah, okay. Clay, Clay County is working right now on theirs and it's a multi-million dollar project, so. Okay, yeah. leave it alone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, we got, we're not big we got, out there. <laughs> you should, we got, uh, I Chief, Chief just lost some more hairs there, I think. Did he? <laughs> Did he? He, do, he doesn't want to do dispatch. They turned now. gray, so. <laughs> we have some dispatchers on staff now, former dispatchers. Good. The, uh, the, uh, the two officers that, that uh, were projected, uh, Cynthia, was that, was that overstaffing or was that just uh, uh, to meet staffing levels? I thought that we were right no, on. No, that would be creation of two additional positions. Okay. Yeah. As, um, as we've discussed before, the overstaffing is what we're doing now to try to ensure that we can always have the um, staff authorized staffing on the department. Okay. Seems like every time a swear one in, we got to open. Wait, right? um, I'm swearing one in tomorrow. Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does. Um, well, uh, Cynthia, are yeah. there any costs? Do we know if there are any costs associated with the community uh, education process or program? Um, for the voters 
That is a very good question. There would there would be cost and that would potentially be minimal. Um, we can, if the board does want to proceed with ballot, we can then also, we'd need timeline for what you all would be thinking and we can develop a plan, a little more intensive plan with estimated costs for a, a information campaign. Yeah, and I got the numbers they used for when Platte County built their jail and that was a countywide initiative and it was not that expensive. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the last thing I have here is uh, there's there's uh, been a lot of talk about uh, recreational marijuana uh, on the ballot. I don't know if that's making the ballot or not in November. That's that's not it something is. we that's not on the agenda. So we need okay. to not okay. talk about that tonight. Thank you. Jumping ahead. Sorry, um, that's all I've got. Thank you, Mayor. All right, I'll open it up to the room. Alderman Ulanol, Alderman Shifley, Alderman Shovelier. Yeah, I'll just say, I mean, let's let's take it to the vote and and, and let's let the community um, decide on the amenities that they want. Okay. So as presented by staff with the uh, maintenance facility and police department and the additional positions funded by sales tax. Everybody go with that? Yes. Any and may I clarify? Is this something you'd like to look for next April, the following November? I think April would be the right time. April? April well, we'll April. do this this fall. We'll work to develop better number information, taking into consideration discussions, um, develop better information on what a campaign could look like, uh, and develop actual language as we refine some of those numbers and, and work with our financial advisors on, as I'd indicate, the mill levy and, and that information. Um, and develop a process and come back to the board this fall so that we can have know what that information is to then um, have ballot language ready for certification in January. Yeah, and I just want to make sure on that ballot language, you know, we, we're very clear, you know, what this is for, you know, the police department, you know, is the, is the main recipient of this. And I think that is well, mm -hmm. is very helpful okay. to, for people to know. Yeah, and I it's support. nice that we have a floor yeah. plan in the yeah. right. design. Right. So. Yeah, the floor plan and the design can absolutely be part of educational information that wouldn't be on the ballot. But one of the reasons of working through the fall, as well as we will bring draft language to you all to make sure that that would make sense then as well. Okay, okay great. Thank you all. Appreciate the direction. Uh, and we'll, you've given us marching orders for work for the fall. Make sure real quickly, staff have any questions from this? I think Chuck? Chuck, no. <laughs> Chuck, your office is a 10 by 10. That's it. No one does. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Just messing with us? Okay, whatever. Three and oh, you can raise your hand every once in a while, I guess. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Do I have a second? Okay. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye. All opposed, aye. Say, no. All opposed say no. All right, let's take a 10 minute break because I'm sure some folks need to run to the restroom and things. So we'll start in 10 minutes, Linda. At least you don't have to take notes in this one.